everyone. For today's video, we'll be going over a lead call problem called top k frequent. Before I get to explaining what the problem is and writing the code, let's just make sure everything works. As you see right here, I've submitted the code as a runtime of 32 milliseconds, which beats 6.9% of other submissions, and in memory of 13.7 megabytes, where it beats 33.35% of other submissions. So let me just X out this. Let me just reload the page. Here we go. Right. So here's our problem. Given an integer array called nums and an integer called k, return the k most frequent elements. You can return the answer in any order. And they give us an example where we notice that the integer array nums contains values 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, and k is a value 2. So what it basically says is, given an integer array called nums and an integer k, in this case 2, return the two most frequent elements. If k was 1, you return the one most frequent element. If k was 5, you return the five most frequent elements. And if you go a little down, we notice that there are constraints. And I'll be honest with you, I don't really go over the constraints until I'm done writing my code, which is something you shouldn't do. Let me see that the length of the list will be a minimum of 1 and a maximum of 10 raised to the fifth power. The numbers in the list, or the elements in the list, the lowest value will be negative 10 raised to the fourth power, and the highest value will be 10 raised to the fourth power. K is in the range of 1, right up to the number of unique elements in the array. It is guaranteed that the answer is unique. Right. Uh, the follow-up is your time complexity must be better than order of n log n. If you submit and all your submission goes through, you know your time complexity is fine. It works. Or you can just go through it code by code, line by line. Uh, I don't go through any discussion questions or use Stack Overflow or anything else when I'm coding. I try to do it as much as I can myself. So let's just minimize all of this or I'll just go straight into code blocks. So let's go up here. Here is a bunch of header files. <laughs> I'm not using most of them, but when I started my first iteration, which you see right here, I did use most of them. So we have a bunch of header files. The one we are using is vector, map, IO stream. Why do I have vector twice? Anyway, vector, map, IO stream. I don't think I'm using the string or the unordered map functions. So now first iteration, oh, this is where I used, okay. So I wrote this function three times because I wasn't sure what my plan of attack was. So this is the first iteration. This is the second iteration, a little shorter. And this is the final iteration, as you see, very short. So I'm just going to go over the last piece of code. I'm not going to go over the first or second iterations. <laughs> so we begin right here. We simply have our function header name that means standard vector. So we know it returns a standard vector containing only elements of integer type. And it's called top k frequent. It takes in a parameter called uh, nums and an integer called k. Just want to check something. All right, so in my function on my uh, code blocks, I had const here instead of just vector, but that's fine. Yep, so uh, it takes a vector called nums and an integer called k. The first thing I did was create a data structure called a dictionary. If you don't know what a dictionary is, it's simply a data structure where things are sorted, well, on, well in this case it is sorted in key value pairs, where a key could be of any other data type, and so can the value. The next thing we did is we'll iterate over the vector called nums using n, and we will create key value pairs where the key will be the unique elements within the vector and the value will be the number of times the unique element appears within the vector. So an example of this is, let me go down here, let me grab this right here. If we have a vector containing 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, the first time through our loop, the vector, our dictionary will create the key value pair 1 and at the end of it, its total values will be 3. 2 will have the key of 2 and the value of 2. 3 will have the key of 3 and the value of 1. 
Then, once we're done after that loop, I created another vector called keys. Now, all we do here is we create a for loop for i equals 0, as long as i is less to k, where k was a parameter we passed up here, and uh, i++. plus plus. We set the highest key equal to the first key in our dictionary, and we set the highest value equal to the first value in our dictionary. So all we have to do here is iterate over the key value pairs in our dictionary, and we determine if the value is higher than the highest value we set right above, we'll just do a switch. We'll set highest to V and the highest key equal to the key that corresponds with V. Once we've done after this loop, once we've done right here, we'll do a keys at pushback and we'll do a dictionary erase highest key. We'll remove that key. So the interesting thing, why did I remove that key? Dictionary erase. How did I think about it? So dictionary erase. Oh, dictionary dot erase. So the next time through the loop, that value is not picked again. So if we have, if R, if K, is the value 2. The first time to the loop, it will choose the value 1 that appears the most, but then we remove 1. And now, as you see, its only option is to select the value 2. It will select the value 2 and it'll end the loop there because k is less. k is the value 2 and i will be less than 2. And that's it. Then all we do is return keys. If we just run our code right here, there's our value 1, 2. And that's all. I think for my next video, I'll code uh, an entire thing from scratch. It'll take a little more time, but yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Well, anyway, that was the code. We can, let me just before end this, we can go back. Once you're done, and I suggest this, if you're doing lead code problems, don't immediately jump into to the solution section or jump to the discussions, discussion tab. Try to do as much as you can yourself and then and only then, if you cannot do it, then look at the solution or go to the discussions tab. I so far haven't needed to do that, and I don't think you will need to do that as well. But we can go through this. Uh, here are some comments right here. People misunderstood the question. Oh, yeah, that seems fair enough. Right. But yep. Next. If my code works, it's rare, incredibly rare, that I'll go back and try to make it faster or have it use less memory. The reason being is I don't see the point of focusing on the past. There's many more questions for me to solve. So that's a video.